What up, Naughty Steppers? It's Connor Whitmore here again with another review for you on the Naughty Step channel. And in today's video, I am going to be talking about the forthcoming compilation from Crow's Nest Audio Elite 2. This is the sophomore Crow's Nest Elite compilation and first since September 2017. Elite 1 featuring a wealth of Death Step stalwarts from Code Pandorum to Quiet and Auto Drive, as well as others such as Aimless, Ten Graphs and Nimda, all of whom and more feature here again. A couple of debutantes on this compilation from London Nebel and Parne Muir to Misfit Massacre, Recoil and Creation, and even a long-awaited return track from Sadu, which I know many people have been very excited to hear. The compilation is out on Friday, pre-save link in the description box down below, and what I'm gonna do here is go through the tracks in order, giving a few points on each, before wrapping up with a few thoughts on Elite 2 as a whole. So yeah, 18 tracks, here we go. And starting off the compilation, we have the latest track from the Death Step Chief himself, Code Pandorum, Monkst. This is a very overtly Death Step track, starting with the threatening beginning, organ notes layered over the top. Drops are a little flat initially, but both pick up really well, some really nice changes in pace. A relatively standard formula and structure to this track, but a good amount of punch and awareness. Straightforward but solid, and if you like Code Pandorum generally, then yeah, you will like this tune a fair bit, it's vintage. Also, the title is just sensational stuff, it really is. <laughs> Secondly, we have Face Split with Buzzsaw, which is also pretty deathly from the off. I enjoy the contained, jabbing nature of the first drop, but I do feel like the percussion could have unleashed it a bit more. The second drop is a good development on the first in that way. Same style, just more emphatic and visceral, which really works. Kind of operates in the distance, which makes it extra eerie. A lot to take from this one sonically, I think. Then we have Bossahaza by London Nebel and Parne Muir, a collaboration that I didn't see coming, but which definitely makes sense on paper when you think about it. I really like the way this one paces itself out, really taking its time to move from section to section. Drops are great, quirky sounds that hit really hard, pretty unique actually, great bounce to the percussion as well. Weird in the best way and hits in the right spots, points where more could happen in the drops, but I appreciate the ideas a lot. Next up we have the Rippers VIP from Tengraphs, and honestly this is one of the better tracks I've ever heard from him. I like the gloomy opening with the intricate percussion, and the creepy drops are up there with my favourites of his. But once more with him, the harder hitting drums do let the track down, meaning the track does drag at points. A shame cause there are some really good sounds on show here, but it does need more snap at times to make it great. Next we have Quad one of the most unique producers in bass music at the moment, and this track reinforces that understanding. Really like how he deploys his own vocals, and this track in particular even seems to be a death step, hip hop sort of hybrid. I like the staggered nature of the drops, and there's a really nice emotion running through them, but again, the percussion does let it down significantly, jarring in amidst a lot of stuff that's very interesting and creative. At track 6 we have Sadu with Afterlife, and honestly I think this track falls short in quite important ways. Going into some sections way too quickly, it's very excitable and lacks composure here and there. There are good aspects, the general energy is good, and the vocal sample plays a great part in the tune overall, but I don't get a sense of patience in construction, quite hurried, and doesn't pack a punch as a result. The collaboration between Recoil and Creation is arguably the first truly larger than life number on the compilation. Real bravado to the introduction, dubstep is dark and full of life, nice dynamic between the sounds on show. Keeping the listener guessing throughout, really delivering on the savagery, it's keen to impress. Could have developed the second drop a little bit further, but this is a spicy tune and especially in comparison to others on the 
compilation. The compilation then ramps up another level with Admin by Nimda, which really throws itself at you. The drops here are up there with my favourites on the whole compilation, proper full throttle, wild arrangement of sounds, amazing change from the first drop to the second as well, took me off my seat, that really is one to look forward to. Couple moments where the sound isn't quite as rich, but then you remember the drops and honestly forget everything else. Also, the track title is an anagram of the producer name, and that's pretty cool. The compilation comes back down to earth somewhat with Shut the Fuck Up by Autodrive, another that just needs unleashing. I like the scene setting introduction, and there are some good sounds in the drops, but mostly they strike me as a bit weird. Decent flow, but a lot of the sounds are very muffled, as if they're being held back, nothing comes to the forefront. A track with a lot of potential, but just needs all of the sounds in high definition to blow you away. The delivery is far too distant here. Following that, we have Aimless with Carbon, a track that has quite a lot going for it. The vocal chopping in the introduction and midsection is one of my favourite bits of the whole compilation. A wealth of attention grabbing sounds in the drops as well, from the all encompassing voluptuous ones to the death step scattergun notes. Bits where more could have been added in to keep the flow going, but there are enough moments where enough is going on I feel. Then at track 11 it's Misfit Massacre with Anarchy, the triumphant heroic intro of which I enjoy a decent amount. The drops are pretty manic though, another where I can see what it's trying to do, but the execution isn't that refined. It's got the dramatic atmosphere on point, this feeling of going to battle, and there being, well, anarchy. But yeah, could do with a little sharpening of the main sounds in the drops to support the other really nice touches. Next is SUDS by 100Hz, another decently ambitious track in its hybrid approach. You get both mid-tempo and death step vibes from this one, following a grungy opening that has a real purpose to it. But the drops are lacking for me, sounds falling over each other, drums fall flat, Overall sound is very muddied. Many nice moments, the vocal sample, certain sounds, but the drops are the focal points and they bring the track down I would say. With Scholar by Brain Palace, again I think we have a track where I can see what it's trying to do, but which isn't doing quite enough for me in the drops, has a weird feel and I'm still not quite sure of the effect it's having on me. I actually like the understated introduction a lot, does well to lure you in and tell a story. And the second drop is more alert and interesting than the first, but fundamentally this track does drag in its heaviest sections. Then we have Extant with Abyss, another quite manic track, but in a different way to the Misfit Massacre one. The drops are good as collections of ideas, but they do seem slightly unsure of what they want to do. No one idea truly shines through. Needs a bit of cohesion and gelling of the sounds available, a lot of which are actually very bright and captivating. Introduction and midsection are also classically great from him. Drops don't quite follow suit, but there is a lot going for this track for sure. Disorder by Psychotic Minds, I would have to say, is another example of the drops letting down the rest of the track somewhat. I enjoy the grisly, demonic intro, very creepy, and the track generally tells a story, has a character to it. And the drops are purposeful, but the sound really does need cleaning up, very contorted and muddy. There is a good direction to it, but it does fall flat sonically in the drops, meaning the tune has no real oomph to it. P.O.D. by Super Wet is I think a vital track for Elite 2 in the energy it brings at this point in the compilation. Pretty infectious bounce and jumpiness to the first drop. The final drop is a lovely switch up as well, proper horrific with those vocal samples. The sound isn't super clear and there are points where the drums could have been snappier to give the track a much more epic feel. But it's very aware, knowing exactly when to bring new sounds in and as 
I mentioned, it is welcomed at this point in the compilation to pick it up a bit. Penultimately, we have Kill Humans by Antima, the enchanting opening of which is probably one of my favourites on the compilation. The death step is ravenous, both drops progress really well, a lot of good techniques up his sleeve. But they do have that distance to them, the drums need to be more at the forefront to ensure the drops really hit in the right spots. Those progressions are really good to be fair, but particular sounds and drums do stop it from having its full desired effect I think. And finally we have Tyrant by Cram, the longest track on the compilation, and I feel ending this way is a very wise move. Loads to this track, from the brilliant classical opening, to the grime vocal sample, the contrast of emotions in it. Also enjoying the progression of it a lot, all the sections are brought in at the right times, the transitioning between them works really well too. Especially considering there's a jump up drum and bass final drop, the execution of of which isn't perfect, but it's such a good idea, absolutely brilliant. Making for a really good idea generally to round off Elite 2, very adventurous and honestly the best song to end the compilation with. But overall with Elite 2 I would say that if you are a fan of Death Step music, then there is so much to get out of this compilation. If you're locked into that ideal and method of production, then you really are a happy bunny. Having said that, I also think there is variety enough here in terms of mood, energy, style, tempo. As long as you're into dubstep music or even dark electronic music generally, you will find lots to enjoy about this thing. As with any compilation and with so many different producers involved, it's a bit of a mix in terms of quality, but I do think that there is something for everyone here. People will like the ones that I wasn't too big on and vice versa. A bit of a journey with many peaks and troughs, and yeah, everyone will get something different from it I think. So check it out when it's released on Friday, and be sure to let me know what you think of it when you've done so. Before Friday is here though, are you guys excited for this compilation? Which tracks would you say you're looking forward to most? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this preview review, then be sure to give it a big old thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, hitting the notification bell along the way. Naughty Step is all about coverage of bass music across a wide variety of genres from EP and album reviews to top fives and top tens, rave footage, opinion pieces and more. So again if that's something that interests you then consider subscribing. For some other Crow's Nest related videos on the channel check out the link next to my head somewhere. If you're not following Naughty Step across social media yet links to all of those are in the description box down below. And lastly if it's naughty then you know guys, so be sure as always to keep it naughty and stay safe. And I shall see all of you legends in the next one. Peace out.